Hi there everyone, I hope you're doing well. I just wanted to mention to you that due to the quarantine, uh, I'll be telling only inside jokes. So for today's lesson, we're gonna talk about Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. I don't know if you know this, but Mozart was baptized as Johannes Chrysostomus, Wolfgangus, Theophilus, Mozart. Deep breath, yeah. Johannes, Chrysostomus, Wolfgangus, Theophilus, Mozart. So you might be asking yourself the question, well, where did the Amadeus come from? Well, here is the mystery solved. Amadeus comes from the third of his long line of middle names. In Greek, Theophilus, it means loved by God. And in the German form, it translates as Gottlieb. And while in Latin, it becomes Amadeus. So during his lifetime, Mozart signed some letters in mock Latin as Wolfgangus Amadeus Mozartus, you know, as you put us after the end of each name, just as you probably have heard about the famous maker Stradivarius. Well, his name is Stradivari and us comes because it's Latin. Anyway, in Italy, uh, around 1770, um, this morphed into Wolfgango Amadeo, which later became Wolfgang Amade. So it was usually normal to translate your name into other languages, and particularly when you publish your music in those countries. So Joseph Haydn, or Joseph Haydn, uh, went by Josephus or Giuseppe in Italian. So Josephus is Latin. While Beethoven, Ludwig van Beethoven, published some work as Luigi, Luigi van Beethoven, or Luis. Uh, Luis is French and Luigi is Italian. So he seemed to be pretty attached to his nickname, Mozart, that is. In his marriage certificate to his wife, he signed his name as Wolfgang Amade Mozart. Uh, but um, it was just uh, once during his lifetime that he was referred to Wolfgang Amadeus in an official document. And that is in a particular letter where he was mentioned with one of his friends. However, the day that Mozart died on 5th of December 1791, his name was entered in the records of the Vienna magistrate as Wolfgang Amadeus. So later people that took care of his uh, works and writers biography and all that, they used uh, that nickname in particular. So it became famous. So anyway, so that's where the mystery of the Amadeus comes from. So he was born in Salzburg, Austria. And his father, who was a violinist and composer also, uh, st started uh, to teach him violin and harpsichord at a very early age. It was first his sister, who was, I think, three years older by him, so she started piano lessons. And so the young Mozart was looking and uh, kind of like um, learning on his own. And when the father uh, saw that the child has talent, he started working with with him. By the age of five, he was already composing. He would need his father's help, not because he didn't want, know what to compose, but because just to hold the pencil <laughs> properly. So by the age of six, he started to touring major cities in Europe, uh, Vienna, Paris, London, he perfor performed for royalties with his elder sister and he wrote his first symphony at age of eight and his opera at age of 12. 
so that's like serious you guys know how serious an opera is what a big kind of work it is so let's hear a little bit of mozart music <laughs> So he was a child prodigy, a child genius. The piano was Mozart's favorite instrument. He wrote numerous sonatas and concertos. The instrument he played was called forte piano. It had a wooden frame. Frame means uh, the place where the strings are attached. So they didn't have metal frames like the piano nowadays, which can sustain a lot higher tension and can be a lot louder. So it was a more delicate sound and the forte piano was similar to the instrument that Mozart himself played. So some differences that we can see. Well, <laughs> is it interesting that the white keys are black and the black keys are white? And that's the first difference that I could probably notice. Another major difference is that there are no pedals. Take a look. If you have seen piano, you probably know that you need a sustain pedal. So this didn't have a sustain pedal. So another thing is that uh, it doesn't seem to have as many keys as a regular piano. So it's a uh, smaller, not as wide instrument. So anyway, I hope this gives you an idea about the instrument that he was using to play and compose. Now, Mozart wrote many piano concertos, but he also composed concertos for violin, flute, and oboe. His four concertos for French horn are very popular. Now, this picture uh, shows a French horn that is a modern French horn. The horns uh, during Mozart's times did not have valves. Uh, they would use the natural overtone series, and the players will change the note by changing their lip pressure. He also wrote a famous concerto for clarinet and orchestra. Let's see what do we have here. Oh yeah, this is the French <laughs> things I won't get to to that but I will post links in the lesson for you guys to uh, listen to some Mozart music and uh, and enjoy Mozart and opera perhaps Mozart is best known for his love of opera and his craftsmanship when he was composing operas it is like his greatest masterpieces yeah, one of his last operas the magic flute was super popular and it's performed nowadays so often. He had a good collaboration. He worked together with the Italian librettist, uh, Lorenzo da Ponte. Now we have Don Giovanni and a couple other operas. I will post some really good links for you guys to listen to in the lesson, in the Google form. Mozart had 41 symphonies in, in his catalog and he died an early death at age of 35. So what are some interesting uh, other facts about Mozart? Uh, you probably have heard that he was poisoned by 
Salieri. I don't know if you have seen uh, uh, the movie. There is this movie Amadeus, but this is uh, not really true. Don't believe what you have watched or what you have heard. Antonio Salieri did not have anything to do with Mozart's death. Uh, actually, Salieri himself fed the rumor. I don't know why, but it was revealed that Salieri was in ill health when he made that confession. So, uh, yes, Salieri definitely did not uh, kill Mozart and definitely did not write Mozart's Requiem. One of his students, Franz Xavier Sussmeier, a copyist of Mozart, uh, is the one that finished the Requiem. Requiem is the piece, kind of like a, a final piece that the composer writes and is played for his death. So, a couple other interesting facts. Uh, him and Haydn were friends. And uh, Haydn uh, was so impressed with uh, Mozart's uh, music and he wrote countless letters to praise him. He said, if only I could impress Mozart's imitable works on the, uh, on the soul of every friend of music and the souls of high personages in particular, as deeply with the same musical understanding and with the same deep feeling as I understand and feel them, the nations would vie with each other to possess such a jewel. And uh, he was uh, really said it numerous times that Mozart was a real genius and probably in a hundred years there wouldn't be another one like, like him. Um, also, um, remember in the Bach lesson, Mozart was taught by Johann Christian Bach, that is Bach's son. Uh, Bach's, uh, Bach taught Mozart for about five months and is said to have huge influence on the compositional style of Mozart. Mozart was rather short, uh, it's about 5'4". He was a small man, thin and pale, and fine fair hair. His complexion was uneven and blotchy. Yeah, he had marks from smallpox. His speaking voice was very high, but it could be loud and commanding. Uh, Mozart, like all of us, loved shopping and uh, he liked beautiful clothing. He composed in short bursts throughout the day. He didn't spend the whole day composing. He did a little bit in the morning, a little bit in the afternoon, a little bit at night. He was quite a night owl. He had a lot of pets. He had a canary, a starling, a dog, and a horse. <laughs> so I don't know if he had any cats. He had a very strange uh, humor. He would, uh, his jokes were like those of a, of a young boy. Probably you would like to know Mozart uh, and uh, Constanze von Weber. Yes, she was uh, related to Karl Maria von Weber. So they had six children, but only two survived. He had four sons and two daughters and his surviving sons uh, his oldest, Carl, became an official for the Viceroy of Naples, uh, and his youngest son, Franz Xavier, uh, followed the family tradition of composing and teaching. Uh, unfortunately, neither son married or had any children. He was very prolific. He composed more than 600 works. So he had 21 stage and opera works, 15 masses, more than 50 symphonies, 25 piano concerto, 12 violin concerto, 27 concert arias, 17 piano sonatas, 26 string quartets. He was a perfectionist. He spent huge amounts of time making tiny refinements to the instrumentation and the dynamics of his manuscript. He was very disorganized. Mozart was terrible at keeping track of his composition and he refused to even write opus numbers. Those are the little things that uh, tell you which uh, number of sequence uh, the work of the composer is, or dates on the sheet music. Thank goodness, uh, Ludwig Ritter von Kirchel uh, later cataloged all of his music. 
numbering them according to the order in which they were written and categorizing them by subgenre. No one had even an idea how much Mozart, uh, music Mozart wrote, not even the composer himself, <laughs> until Kirchhoff's extraordinary um, cataloging uh, work. Mozart spent years uh, trying to win the love of Constanza before they were married. And uh, Mozart learned that Constanza loved Baroque counterpoint. So he studied the work of Bach and Handel intently and wrote some of his own fugues. And soprano solo was uh, for, from, for his great mass in C minor was written for Constanza. And she sang it at the Salzburg premiere. Mozart always spoke his mind even to the emperors. And now what is really interesting is nowadays there is this movement that they are having uh, babies uh, listen to Mozart. And if they do, they're saying that it improves their cognitive uh, skills. Um, even <laughs> food and drink companies all over the world claim that playing Mozart causes their products to grow and uh, ripen and brew better. Um, I'm a little bit skeptical, but hey, Mozart never hurt anyone. His wife loved him forever. She survived her husband by more than 50 years. So after his death, she married again and traveled throughout Europe. However, she worked tirelessly to promote Mozart's music and preserve his legacy. After his death, she organized a memorial concert and published some of his uh, later works. Later, she and her second husband worked together on Mozart's biography. Mozart composed everywhere. He was writing when he was on the road, at meals, at social gatherings with friends, and even when his wife was in labor. Mozart spoke many languages. Uh, I don't know how many, some people say 15, but he probably picked up German, French, English, Dutch, Italian, if not more. Everybody has something that is yuck. However, Mot for Mozart, that was a trumpet. His father uh, recounted that he would turn pale and begin to collapse at the, <laughs> the sound of the trumpet. Um, some say that he wrote only one piece for trumpet and some say that there is no physical evidence of it because the piece was lost. So, hey, the man is a legend. What can I tell you? But I do hope that you enjoyed this lesson and please listen to some of those links that I will post in the Google uh, for not in the Google form, but on Google Classroom uh, for you to enjoy. And a hey, if it helps you do your homework better and to uh, get better answers on your other subjects, Mozart never hurt anyone. Enjoy, Mr. D. Peace out.